Okay, we are streaming live. Okay, welcome everyone to the February 7th meeting of the Township Committee. This meeting is being held in accordance with the laws of New Jersey, pursuant to Section 5, Chapter 231 of the Public Laws of 1975. Adequate notice of this meeting has been provided to the public by posting and maintaining the annual notice of regular meetings on the bulletin board of the municipal building by mailing the annual notice of regular meetings for 2023 to the news record and star ledger in December, 2022, and by filing said notice in the office of the township clerk. Ms. Adams? Here. Ms. Kreit? Here. Mr. DeLuca? Here. Ms. Engel? Here. Mayor Daffis? Here. Whereas Chapter 231, Public Laws 1975, commonly known as the Open Public Meetings Act, requires all means public bodies be open to the public. And whereas Section 7A provides that the governing body has the discretion to permit, prohibit, or regulate the act of participation of the public at any meeting, and whereas the desire of the governing body to comply with the provision of this act, same time to conduct its business in an orderly and expeditious manner, now therefore be resolved by the Township Committee, Township of Maplewood does hereby prohibit except as set forth in the formal agenda, active participation in the deliberations of the governing body by the public, except as otherwise described by law, does limit the public to the observations of the actions and discussions of the governing body at all its regular and special meetings. So moved. Second. Second. Ms. Adams? Yes. Ms. Kreit? Yes. Mr. DeLuca? Yes. Ms. Engel? Yes. Mayor Daffis? Yes, thank you, Ms. Fritzen. Please join me in our Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Welcome friends and neighbors. We have a pretty short agenda tonight, I hope. Uh, we're going to start with a important proclamation. Uh, it is Black History Month in our community, and we're excited about that. And we have a lot of great events throughout the month to celebrate, to honor, to acknowledge, to raise awareness, to educate. So we hope that you will join us, and we will start things off tonight with a very special proclamation that will be read by committee member Kripe. That will lead us into uh, our first public comment period for agenda items only. Uh, and then we will segue into the Board of Health meeting. That meeting will be led by Board of Health Chair, President, uh, Deputy Mayor Engel. We have one ordinance on final passage tonight. Uh, this is one to amend the code of the township to allow, um, uh, to open the community pool to all during, um, when the weather forecast called for extreme heat, as we previously uh, have discussed and defined. We have one ordinance, uh, actually two ordinances on introduction tonight. The first one uh, is a reintroduction, if you will, uh, to amend our previous introduction to include all the residential zones uh, and uh, to bring this back again to the Township Committee for a vote after being discussed uh, at the planning board. And we have a bond ordinance to support our portion um, of the uh, flood mitigation facilities project for the joint meeting. Three ordinances, excuse me. Uh, we're also gonna introduce long overdue and long awaited uh, new regulations for outdoor streeter streeteries uh, in Maplewood, our outdoor dining, as we've been calling it. And uh, that's going to be moved by committee member Adams, who has been the architect and lead on this uh, very difficult task of bringing everybody together to a final set of regulations that are right for Maplewood. Then we have administrative reports. We'll start with interim administrator Schuster, followed by township attorney Desiderio, and we always end with Township Clerk Fritzen. And then we have reports from us, the elected officials. This evening's order is as follows, Deputy Mayor Engel, Committee Member DeLuca, Committee Member Kripe, Committee Member Adams, and I always go last as mayor. 
Uh, we have a few discussion items tonight. Uh, we're exploring the idea of a salary study. Uh, we've heard from our employees about inequities and in compensation, uh, and we're trying to do right instead of uh, what we've been doing, which is uh, being a little bit all over the place and, and promoting and raising salaries uh, ad hoc. We're looking at a um, an overarching approach here. We're gonna discuss the pros and cons of that. And that will be led by our interim administrator who's done a lot of work and research on this item. Then we're gonna discuss July 4th, right around the corner, believe it or not. Um, and tonight we will be considering the township's approval of our last cannabis retail license for the firm called Dokana. And Deputy May Mayor Engel will lead us in discussion of a fields committee to replace a former task force that is no longer uh, active. And then we have our consent agenda previously published as the rest of the agenda has. And that leads us into our second and final public comment period on any subject matter. And then we will adjourn. And we'll try to get this done as soon as we can. We know the State of the Union addresses tonight. Uh, and there's a lot of things, <clears throat> excuse me, going on across our nation and around the world. Uh, we want to give people the opportunity to connect with that if we can get it done. So let's get started. First, I invite all of us as a community to uh, engage in a moment of silence to honor uh, a couple of very important Maplewoodians that we lost in the past couple of weeks, uh, and to acknowledge also uh, and honor the life of Tyree Nichols, um, another black man taken, uh, whose life was taken by police brutality. Uh, first, we want to take a moment of silence to honor Jim Buchanan. Uh, I don't think, for those of you who've been in Maplewood for a really long time, I don't think Jim needs an introduction. He's been a long time, he was a long time resident, a former employee uh, in the Department of Cultural Affairs, uh, a member of the Maplewood Community Music, and obviously the heart of the Hilton Neighborhood Association, along with his wonderful uh, late wife, Carol Buchanan, whom we lost a couple of years back. Uh, Jim passed away. Uh, on Tuesday, January 31st, and our, you know, our hearts just go out to the entire family. We had a wonderful gathering of music and 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 sharing uh, space the other night at Parkwood Diner. Thank you to Parkwood Diner for hosting that. Thank you to the Hilton Neighborhood Association um, and everyone, including committee member DeLuca, for putting that together on such short notice. Um, I think Jim would have been really pleased to see us all not mourning him, but rather uh, in his honor being as festive as we could be with word, with music, and with food, all the things that he loved too. Uh, so our hearts go out to the Buchanan family. Um, may his memory uh, be internal and may they find strength and resilience during this difficult time. Also, we lost another um, longtime Maplewoodian, Stephen Wesley, who is uh, who was the dad of our Michelle Wesley, who uh, runs our senior services uh, and is the facility set manager of the senior center. Uh, and our hearts, again, go out to the Wesley family, and uh, we wish them strength and resilience during this difficult time. And as I mentioned, we must also acknowledge uh, what we witnessed yet again on our TV screens, our mobile telephone screens, our computers, we witnessed once again in America the dehumanization of Black life at the hands of police brutality. And I would also add that um, the dehumanization of Black life also applies to the members of the police who committed this awful murder. They too, Black lives dehumanized by the militarization of policing in America because of training, uh, because of the culture. I'm proud that in Maplewood, together, we've had those very difficult conversations and we've done a lot of work to change things for policing in, in Maplewood. 
Uh, now we have bo uh, body cameras all the time required to be on. We have police accountability and transparency. We have public safety committee meetings where we actually share what's happening in our town in terms of crime. We have a civilian review board made up of residents of Maplewoodians who judge the policing um, by those who are paid to serve the community. Uh, and to protect the community. And uh, we call for justice for Tyree, and there will not be justice until we acknowledge the reality of the injustice that exists in America and the hard work that other communities around the country need to do uh, in better policing, better training as we have done and all the things that we are working on together here in Maplewood. So, um, with that, uh, you know, we just talked about Black life mattering, right? Let's talk, let's get into the proclamation to honor Black History Month. Committee member Cry, please lead us. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, I don't know if we actually took that moment of silence for Jim, though. <laughs> oh, yeah, we didn't take the moment of silence for anyone. We didn't take the moment. Thank you. Thank you. I got ahead of myself. We didn't take the moment of silence for anyone. So let's just take a few seconds here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Every February, Black History Month is recognized to not only encourage the study of African-American life and history, but to act as a reminder that Black history is an integral part of the history of the United States of America. What began as a week, recognizing Black history championed by Dr. Char Carter G. Woodson and Minister Jesse E. Moreland back in 1926, when they founded the Association for the Study of African-American Life and History, evolved into a month by, Jan by 1976, after official recognition by then President Gerald Ford. Each year, the association presents a new theme, and the theme for 2023 is Black resistance. The historic and ongoing resistance of African-Americans has had a profound effect not only on American life, but also in setting precedents and standards of resistance throughout the world. Since their brutal capture and deliverance to these shores, Black Americans have had to consistently push the United States to live up to its ideals of freedom, liberty, and justice for all. This resistance persisted and stretched through the Civil War, Reconstruction, Jim Crow, the Civil Rights Movement, and the Black Power Revolution. And it continues today in the movement for Black lives. From Bayard Rustin, Gloria Richardson, W.E.B. Du Bois, and James Baldwin to their modern counterparts, Michelle Alexander, Tarana Burke, Laverne Cox, and Brian Stevenson. It is shown from speaking out, shouting out, marching through the streets and making people not only aware, but properly informed and rightfully angry that we continue to see a change in Americans' life. And here in Maplewood, we witness the effect of educating our students in the full spectrum of American history told through many voices, those of the global majority, LGBTQ plus people, females, women, those intentionally silenced through mass incarceration and classist economic policies. This knowledge informs our youth's reasoning. It enriches their politics and empowers their ability to, and willingness to speak out against injustice. It instills in them the courage to pursue an understanding of our collective history in the face of sanitized state-sanctioned ignorance, to seek out truth with a capital T, and to navigate discomfort because knowledge is an intrinsic part of building diverse, equitable, and inclusive communities. Now, therefore, be it proclaimed that our mayor, Dean Daffis, and the members of this governing body of the Township Committee of Maplewood implore all residents to further educate themselves about the contributions of African Americans, not only during Black History Month, but throughout the entirety of the year. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you very much, committee member Cripe. That was beautifully done. Thank you. Before we head into our first public comment for agenda items only, uh, I'm going to read into the, I'm going to move the following uh, appointments, reappointments in this instance uh, to our boards and committees. Uh, so I move the following appointments for the seniors advisory committee, 
uh, Joan Crystal, Kathy Bristol, Donna Plotnick, Judith Kramer, all being reappointed their terms to end 12-31-2025. For the Affordable Housing Board, Carrie Puglisi, also reappointed through 12-31-2025. For the Environmental Advisory Committee, Rich Wenner and Jonathan Orr, uh, reappointing them as well through 12-31-2025. And last but not least, for the Swimming Pool Advisory Committee, Laurie McGuire Gates through 1231 2025. Do I have a second? Second. Ms. Adams? Yes. Ms. Craig? Yes. Mr. DeLuca? Yes. Sengel? Yes. Mayor Daffis? Yes. Thank you, Ms. Fritzen, and thank you to my colleagues for supporting those reappointments. And we do now have our public comment, the first one for agenda items only. I'm gonna turn it over to Mr. Waltz. Mr. Waltz, we do have our county liaison, uh, Ms. Richardson here, Valentina Green Richardson, and I'm gonna offer her the courtesy to address the committee uh, and to have members of the public uh, interact with her uh, as they need to, okay? Welcome, Ms. Richardson. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, on behalf of the county executive, I, I want to say uh, thank you for having me to be on to be your liaison with Maplewood. It's been about a year. It's been a privilege working with you. And I just want to extend and make sure everyone is aware any issues or concerns that you have, please uh, let me know. I will again put my email in the chat so that we can work towards a resolution to address any questions or concerns that you that you have that the county can assist you with. That's, that's the first thing. Uh, the next thing is in terms of uh, with this cold weather, we've been having cold weather spurts. If there happens to be an individual after uh, regular business hours, uh, www.nj211.org is available in terms of providing assistance for emergency shelters until we're able to assist the person on the next business day. Uh, the next item, that is coming up in the month of March is there will be a job fair at Turtleback Zoo scheduled for March 11th. That's a Saturday from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. I will forward that flyer. So if you could share that information, it's regarding spring and summer and seasonal positions with the Turtleback Zoo. That's all that I have for today. Thank you, Ms. Richardson Green. Uh, we appreciate your updates. And uh, I know the county is also planning a whole bunch of Black History Month events also. Uh, and those are on the website. Um, and they did a fabulous job last week of hosting one that was uh, beautifully intersectional. Uh, they highlighted local queer artists um, of color uh, in a civil rights theme, social justice themed um, event, uh, which was both an honor to MLK Day and also uh, preemptive to Black History Month this month. So uh, I went to that and it was wonderful. And I want to thank the county for that. Do we have any questions? Any of my colleagues have any questions for our liaison? I do. Ben. Go ahead, Ms. Adams. Thank you. Um, I don't want any answer necessarily now, but I would like some updates from the county, uh, maybe at the next meeting or the next time you're with us um, with regard to improvements in the parks and what the plans are for, you know, the reservation, the zoo, the golf courses to what kind of projects are going on there. Cause um, well, I haven't heard anything in a while. I just wanna I'm okay. sure our environmental committees are interested in it. So, we'll do. I'll, I'll take the the information back to our, our parks director to see uh, what type of updates and information that I can get out to the committee. If not before our next meeting, I'll send out via email and then cover at the next meeting. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. To the public. I do have one question, uh, Ms. Green, if you can also see what information you can find about the timeline and the schedule of the expected 
intersection improvements along Valley Street between South Orange and Maplewood. That's a project that started. We know uh, we're expecting the other intersections to come soon, uh, but it's been a while since we received an update about that project. Yes, we'll do. I'll follow up to see what updates are available and I'll, I'll get that information out to everyone on the committee. Grateful for that. Thank you. Um, okay, Mr. Waltz, you want to take over? Good evening, Mayor and Township Committee. We will now begin the first public comment portion of our meeting on agenda items only. If any meeting attendee would like to address the Township Committee, please use the raise your hand function. We will convert you over to a panelist and allow you three minutes to speak. Would anybody like to address the Township Committee at this time? I see no hands, Mayor. I see no hands either, Mr. Waltz. Thank you. Seeing none, we will close the public comment period. There will be another opportunity toward the end of the meeting. Uh, this brings us to our Board of Health meeting, and I'm going to turn it over to Deputy Mayor Engel, the President Chair of Board of Health. Thank you so much, Mayor Daffis. Um, pursuant to Section 5, Chapter 231, PL 1975, this is to state for the record that adequate notice of this meeting has been provided to the public by posting and maintaining the annual notice of regular meetings on the bulletin board of the municipal building by mailing the annual notice of regular meetings for 2023 to the news record and star ledger in December 2022 and by filing said notice in the office of the township clerk. Ms. Adams. Here. Ms. Kreit. Here. Mayor Daffis. Here. Mr. DeLuca. Here. Ms. Angle. Here. Whereas Chapter 231, Public Laws 1975, commonly known as the Open Public Meetings Act, requires that all meetings of public bodies be open to the public. And whereas Section 7A provides that the Board of Health has the discretion to permit, prohibit, or regulate the act of participation of the public at any meeting. And whereas desire the Maplewood Board of Health to comply with the provision of this act, same time to conduct its business in an orderly and expeditious manner. Now, therefore, be resolved by the Maplewood Board of Health and Township of Maplewood, those hereby prohibit except to set forth in the formal agenda, active participation in the deliberations of the Board of Health by the public, and except as otherwise described by the law, does limit the public to observation of the actions and discussions of the Board of Health at all of its regular and special meetings. So moved. Second. Ms. Adams? Yes. Ms. Kreit? Yes. Mayor Daffis? Yes. Mr. DeLuca? Yes. Ms. Engel? Yes. Um, I move to approve the minutes from January 3rd, 2023. Second. Second. Ms. Adams? Yes. Ms. Kreit? Yes. Mayor Daffis? Yes. Mr. DeLuca? Yes. Ms. Engel? Yes. And now I will turn it over to our health officer, Candace Davenport. I'm going to share my screen. Okay. Can everyone see that? Okay. Yes, we can. Jeez. Hold on one second, please. Hold on. Sorry about that. Okay, um, just wanna emphasize the importance of cat and dog licensing. We are in cat and dog licensing se session right now. Um, I just wanna update you about the importance of it is for prevention of rabies vaccine. When we license a dog or cat in Maplewood annually, we ensure that each dog and cat has a rabies vaccine as per um, the state regulation for dogs, especially to have a rabies vaccine updated. So in early 2023 in January, um, earlier this month, this past month, St. Hubert's when they were still our uh, animal control provider did um, engage with a loose fox um, that was in Maplewood. There was no human contact and no um, animal contact um, in terms of a bite, but there was, um, exposure in terms of being in the same area. So St. Hubert's did take the fox uh, to the state lab, which confirmed that it was positive for rabies. 
The health department and the police department were both notified and using the police and St. Hubert's incident report, the residents uh, were notified and the dogs involved received their rabies boosters from their veterinarians and um, all were already vaccinated and licensed. So all to say that licensing in Maplewood is super important. I'll go over the stats about um, some of our achievements in increasing dog and cat licensing. Um, you will see in the upcoming um, Soma Living magazine on um, page 31, an update from us uh, at the health department regarding uh, reminders to the community to license their pet. Since we are going live next month, this will probably be my last PowerPoint. So I wanted to take the moment to um, showcase um, some of our health department accomplishments. I won't read them all here. All of our PowerPoints from this point forward will be on our township um, health department website for easy access for general public. Um, that'll coincide with my um, live report when I see you next month. But just wanna emphasize that we have um, administrative accomplishments um, our nursing accomplishments, we have uh, some of the highest rates of COVID vaccination rates in Essex County. And because of our um, homebound initiation uh, with our public health nurse, we've increased our homebound outreach. And we've had about 56 communicable and infectious diseases that we've monitored along with 4,301 COVID cases last year. In addition, um, as I mentioned with the um, dog and li cat licensing, we increased our dog and cat licensing, and, but we also had 24 animal bites that our um, inspectors had to um, inspect and make sure that they were in quarantine. We also had 195 environmental health complaints, um, but reduced our garbage complaints by 27% through a lot of our outreach efforts. Um, and we also um, increased compliance with our grease trap ordinance, which we put in uh, about a year ago with all of our restaurants. So that's great news. And then our local health outreach coordinator, we had our first um, annual health fair. And because of um, her presence in our office, the township was able to connect over 100 residents to local county and state social services. Um, we are also to, able to improve the community fridge experience by providing a monthly donation um, schedule, which uh, is coordinated also uh, through Talia Jeffers. And our crisis intervention social worker um, responded to and provided follow-up to 150 unique crisis cases this year. So onward and upward, we are um, busy and fast moving and diverse, but that's some of the highlights for the health department. Administratively, um, I've mentioned that a lot of our uh, staff are grant funded uh, through COVID. Uh, we did receive the Enhancing Local Public Health Capacity Grant. Uh, it's a grant awarded to Maplewood for $139,686 for the first year, which is October 2022 to June 2023. Since we received that um, letter of intent, um, I'd like to ask the Board of Health for a request to, of authorization to sign for this um, funding from Ninjacho. Can I get a motion, please? Well, it's actually a motion to accept the grant and to authorize to the administrator to sign the, the grant documents. Thank you, Mr. Desiderio. I move it. Second. Thank you very much. Ms. Adams. Ms. Adams, Ms. Craig. Yes. Mayor Daffis. Yes. Mr. DeLuca. Yes. Sengel. Yes. Sorry, okay. I couldn't unmute. My apologies. Are you a yes? Thank you very much. Moving on to communicable and infectious disease update. Um, <clears throat> I just want to update you that the WHO declared an end to the Ebola outbreak in Uganda, which also means an end to traveler monitoring on our part as the local health departments and departments in the United States. Um, as for flu and COVID updates, let me update you first on the flu. While the state activity is low for the flu, um, and that's hopeful, in the Northeast, however, we are still in moderate. Um, and uh, when we spoke with the State Health Department, they do anticipate um, as it's ebbing down, there might be an uptick in March. So um, please, if you haven't gotten vaccinated, it's not too late. Moving on to COVID, in January, we had 167 cases. And unfortunately, two deaths um, last month due to COVID. Um, when I speak about the variants later on, um, 
it really is important for people to understand that um, getting vaccinated and getting that booster is important. Um, but one of the things that we are also seeing is that its impact on the elderly um, is part of the deaths that we're seeing um, throughout, um, not just locally, but throughout. Uh, we are in moderate for COVID, but I do wanna mention that as um, President Biden mentioned, uh, they will be ending the public health emergency on May 11th, and they are moving toward um, an annual vaccination for COVID. Um, same thing as with the flu vaccine, they'll do one annually. Um, and so if you're doing a, a boost of an annual COVID booster, uh, a COVID vaccine, excuse me, there will no longer be a need for the primary two dose series as we move forward. Vaccine will still be available as per the federal government until October 1st, 2024. So vaccinations uh, provided through the health departments and through um, local government entities will still be available through the federal government, um, even past the public health emergency. So um, vaccinations like these will still continue. Uh, just a reminder to people to get their vaccination um, available through the county at these locations throughout the county uh, from 2 to 6 p.m. And we also have a new um, infant vaccine clinic also offered at the Turtleback Zoo from 2 to 6 um, on scheduled times. Um, and you have to call to schedule an appointment. Uh, lastly, we still are offering COVID-19 booster shots for homebound residents who are interested, and they can feel free to contact the health department if they are interested in um, scheduling a vaccine. Um, I also want to mention, um, let me just mention, go back here, that a home test reported in January was 26. You can report your home test online at the Maplewood website under the health department COVID-19 tab. And that ends my presentation. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ms. Davenport. Do any of my colleagues have any questions for our health officer? No? All right, seeing none, I will now open it up to the public to address the board. Um, do we have any members of the public who would like to ask any questions to our health officer? I see no one, Deputy Mayor. Yeah, I see no one too, yep. Um, great, moving on. I move to adjourn um, our Board of Health meeting and to the next scheduled meeting will be Tuesday, March 7th at 7.30 p.m. in person at Town Hall. Do I have a second? So, Ms. Adams? Yes. Ms. Greit? Yes. Mayor Daffis? Yes. Mr. DeLuca? Yes. Ms. Engel? Yes. Good night, everyone. Thank you, Health Officer Davenport. Thank you very much. See you in person. Our first back in action live meeting on my birthday, my 53rd birthday, March 7th. <laughs> Come on out. We're going to. Um, A better way to celebrate. We're going to celebrate Women's History Month with an awesome proclamation. Lots of great electeds, current and former. It's going to be it's going to be a blast. All right. Let's move on to uh, ordinances on final passage. Ordinance 3083-23, Ms. Fritzen. Yes, Mayor, it's uh, item number eight, ordinance on final passage, ordinance number 3083-23. It's an ordinance to amend chapter 193 of the code of the Township of Maplewood entitled Maplewood Community Pool. This ordinance will establish that the Maplewood Community Pool will open for all Maplewood residents, whether or not they are pool members, when weather forecasts call for extreme heat. This ordinance has been published, copies posted on the bulletin board in the municipal building and copies made available to the general public in accordance with the law. I'm gonna open it up to the public. Are there members of the public who wish to comment? Uh, on this ordinance before its final passage this evening. Mr. Waltz, anyone? I see no one, Mayor. Okay, seeing none, I'll close the public hearing. Uh, are there members of the Township Committee who wish to remark on this ordinance? Seeing none, I ask Committee Member Cripe to move the ordinance into final passage. 
Mayor, I move this ordinance to be adopted as a whole and the clerk be directed to publish the same as a past ordinance in the Maplewood South Orange News Record according to law. Mr. Rickson, can you call the roll? Uh, we need a second, please. Second. 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 Ms. Adams? Yes. Ms. Cripe? Yes. Mr. DeLuca? Yes. Sangle? Yes. Mayor Dathis? Yes. Introduction of an ordinance, 3084-23. Uh, yes, Mayor. Item number nine, introduction of a new ordinance, ordinance number 3084-23. It's an ordinance to amend chapter 271 of the Code of the Township of Maplewood entitled Zoning and Development Regulations. This ordinance will, with regard to zoning districts R17, R15, R14, and R24, amend the facade length adjacent to side lot lines from 30 feet to 40 feet in each zone. we we'll get a motion. Yes, I move the passage of this ordinance on first reading. It's publication according to law in the Maplewood South Orange News Record and a hearing to be held on February 21st. Ms. Engel? Second. Moved and seconded. Ms. Adams? Yes. Ms. Craig? Yes. Mr. DeLuca? Yes. Ms. Engel? Yes. Mayor Daffis. Yes, thank you, Ms. Fritzen. We have ordinance 3085-23, also a new ordinance or bond ordinance. Yes, Mayor, uh, ordinance uh, 3085-23, bond ordinance providing for phases 11B, uh, I'm sorry, Roman numeral 2B, 3B, 4, 5, and 6 of the local units allocable share of the Flood Mitigation Facilities Project of the Joint Meeting of Essex and Union Counties, buying in the Township of Maplewood in the County of Essex, State of New Jersey, the local unit, appropriating $3,835,000 therefore, and authorizing the issuance of $3,835,000 in bonds or notes to finance the costs thereof. Joint Meeting, Flood Mitigation Facilities Project. I move the passage of this ordinance on first reading. It's publication according to law in the Maplewood South Orange News Record and a hearing to be held on February 21st, 2023. Second. Ms. Adams? Yes. Ms. Bright? Yes. Mr. DeLuca? Yes. Angle? Yes. Mayor Davis? Yes. 3086. Uh, yes, the uh, third and final ordinance on introduction, 308623, is an ordinance to establish regulations for outdoor streeteries on the streets of Maplewood. This ordinance will establish that the terms and conditions under which streeteries will be allowed on the streets of Maplewood. I move the passage of this ordinance on its first reading, its publication according to law in the Maplewood South Orange News Record and a hearing to be held on February 21st. I read her lips, she said. I second that. it. Yep, yep. <laughs> Ms. Adams? Yes. Ms. Cripe? Yes. Mr. DeLuca? Yes. Zangle? Yes. Mayor Daffis? Yes, thank you, Ms. Fritzen. We got through our ordinances. The next item is typically a report from departments, which we don't have, just a placeholder here. Administrative reports, we're gonna turn it over to Mr. Schuster, our interim township administrator. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Have a few things to report this evening, as I do every meeting. Uh, we've been reporting on working on the budget. We are taking the feedback from the two uh, public budget hearings that we held uh, and incorporating that. We've had continually meeting, continually been meeting uh, internally, looking at both operating and capital reductions, and looking forward to bringing back those changes uh, to the township committee. Um, there is. Uh, Right now, another budget hearing that we are going to plan on scheduling for February 23rd at 6 p.m. Uh, to talk about open space and capital items. Uh, 
Aside from budget, also we're notified that it is time to uh, look at renewing our cable franchise agreement with Comcast. Uh, we got a preliminary letter to reach out to them, so I'll be doing that shortly and working with Mr. Desiderio uh, on that endeavor. Uh, next, uh, we're also seeking proposals right now uh, to bring on board a health insurance broker. Uh, as you know, we, as long as with other municipalities, have seen sharp increases as uh, being members of the state uh, health care plan. Uh, it's time for the township to look at various options going forward, and we feel that a broker uh, is someone that can help uh, help us get through that process and look at all the alternatives and hopefully select something that is in the best interest of both the township and our employees. And finally, uh, at the last meeting, uh, there was uh, a request to look at our street lights and be a little bit more proactive. Um, I did forward everyone an email uh, after meeting with Public Works Director, Mr. Kittner, as well as Chief Sally uh, on this, and uh, we formulated a plan uh, and uh, we're enacting that uh, right now and hopefully being a little bit more proactive. We still encourage people though, when they see a light out or any kind of issues to report it so we can work uh, with the necessary people to get that replaced. Uh, and that is all I have for this evening, uh, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Schuster. Any questions for Mr. Schuster? Mr. DeLuca. Thank you, Mayor. Um, <clears throat> Mr. Schuster, this is, I think it's to you, but I also think it's to uh, Ms. Barnett and Mr. Desiderio. Um, we received uh, in January a letter about the tax revaluation. Uh, from professional property appraisals. It was signed by our tax assessor and also the project supervisor for PPA. Um, the letter was in English. The brochure was in English, and I'm not questioning the merits of the, of the contents, but there was nothing here as we discussed with them <clears throat> that they would let people know that folks who are not proficient in reading English or, or speaking English would have another way of getting this information. Um, so we kind of missed the boat. Normally on these letters, you know, we, you say something about anyone who needs a different language and we can list the languages, you know, co contact this. So there's nothing on the PPA website that's other than these two documents, which are in English. So I'd like us to go back to what we agreed to that we would have other languages included and somehow get that up on our website and have PPA get it on their website. I'll speak to the assessor tomorrow morning, Mayor. I'm Mr. Luca. Got it. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay. Thank you for that, Mr. DeLuca. I noticed that too. Uh, usually it's at least in English on one side and on Spanish on the other. Um, but anyway, we'll get to that. I think I could be wrong, but I think that we at least at one time also did it in Creole. Mr. DeLuca, is that right? We'll talk about, I'll talk with that to That's be correct. about that as well. Okay. Okay. Thank you, uh, Mr. Schuster, Mr. Desiderio. Uh, Ms. Barnett first or? or, or oh, maybe? yes. Uh, Assistant Administrator Barnett, my apologies. That's okay, Mayor. Uh, just a couple of quick things. So as Interim Administrator Schuster said, we've been working on the budget, having uh, several meetings, just kind of tightening that up and getting it ready uh, for some future work. That includes the budget hearing that's set for February 23rd at 6 p.m. And for anybody in the public who's interested in the information on that, it is listed on the Township calendar and the Zoom information is in the description. Um, just a couple of other things we've been working on, a health officer, Davenport and I have been working to revive the employee walking challenge at the township as part of the mayor's wellness campaign for the year. Yeah, so if uh, y'all are interested in participating, start getting uh, some team ideas ready. We're ordering some sample pedometers, so we'll let you know once we have everything really fully amped up, but we're setting the groundwork for that right now for when the weather gets nicer. Uh, we've well, also the, the township committee has consistently lost these contests. Yeah, we have. So Let's keep up our record here. I think our pedometers are malfunctional. No, we just uh, have office jobs. That's the problem. <laughs> I think we should go for mileage, like carbon. Uh, there you go. That works. <laughs> yes, yes. You're trying to carbon offset your steps. Is that what you're trying to do? Yeah, yeah. 
Dean, you have to take more steps because you drive the farthest to work. <laughs> I love that. I love that. Strap it to your wheel. Okay. <laughs> there you go. I'll get some extra mileage for y'all. Um, we also are working on a couple of other initiatives through the mayor's wellness campaign. I know that Health Officer Davenport uh, recently sent over to the mayor our new logo that's going to be released for that over the next month. So y'all will start seeing that on some of our different programming for town that uh, falls under that mayor's wellness campaign umbrella. Some of the projects are going to be very obviously public health related. Some of them are for overall wellness and longevity. So hopefully by having that present, folks can realize some of the not as obvious ways that public health can be advanced and maintained within the township. Uh, we've also been working on rolling out GovPilot to the registrar. Uh, so there's going to be a couple of services, including um, marriage licenses, for example, that are going to now be digitized through GovPilot. That was um, part of us finalizing our phase one of rollout through the Office of the Township Clerk. So hopefully more to come in future, but that's something if anyone's making a registrar appointment in the coming weeks, that's something that they will notice. Um, we've also been working to address some of the transportation concerns that folks have raised, particularly folks in the senior community. I'm in contact with the South Orange Parking Authority about getting their Jitney uh, service expanded potentially another stop or two within Maplewood. That's very early in the conversation. So we'll be looping some more folks in in the coming days, but that is something that we are working on. Uh, we also recently coordinated between the Two Towns for All Ages initiative and the Community Services Department to offer a weekly senior grocery trip Jitney transport. So that leaves from the senior apartment building on Irvington Avenue every Wednesday at, I believe, 11 a.m. and takes folks to one of the nearby grocery stores so that folks can have easy transportation there. Um, the senior Jitney is also available as a reminder to folks um, in the mornings up until 2 p.m. during weekdays, although we are looking forward to hopefully adding in that ADA accessible Jitney once um, that gets approved and ordered in the next couple of years. Uh, we're also looking to have some more uh, ADA accessible transportation in the near future through a pilot that we're gonna be proposing under some of our increasing public health capacity funds. Uh, so more information is forthcoming on that, but overall we're really working on making transportation more accessible to all members of the community. And this is also gonna tie into our walkability study that we are still coordinating with engineering to kind of get a good background set up for. Uh, that's all I have for today. So if anybody has any questions, I'm happy to answer them, but otherwise that that's all for my report. That's a lot. Thank you, Assistant Administrator Barnett. As I said last time, you are juggling a lot. Thank you. Any questions for Assistant Administrator Barnett? Okay, we'll move on for real this time to Township Attorney Desiderio. Mayor, I still have no report. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> then we will kick it over to our <laughs> Adam Clark. Thank you, Mayor. Um, so uh, we're making a uh, headway in getting the Township Committee room back to uh, how you might have remembered it from three years ago for your meeting on March 7th so that you feel comfortable. It's amazing in uh, a short three years how uh, certain things we did have in there are no longer there, they've disappeared. So I'm working on making sure that you have everything that will make you uh, comfortable in our first meeting uh, back in person. So um, we're also, of course, taking care of the appropriate meeting notifications and so forth that we will be back in person, uh, the public notices. In addition, uh, I've been conducting a, a bunch of uh, planning meetings for events. And uh, we have a lot of stuff going on, as you all know. And it just uh, makes things go a lot smoother when we have the planning meetings uh, for larger scale events. And uh, that's all that I have at this time, unless you have any questions of me. Thank you, Ms. Ritson. Any questions for our clerk? Is my booster seat still in the drawer? <laughs> well, I don't know. I'm finding people's jackets and uh, crazy There's some really old stuff in some of those drawers. <laughs> yeah, but I want to make sure that, you know, certain uh, cards with words on them and things like that are there. Yeah. 
I have to say, we waited out the murals being put back up. Yes. So, that, so that's that's a good thing. The murals are back up. And yeah. they look super. Yes, they do. They do. It's beautiful in there. And thank you to Miss Adams for being comic relief tonight. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's great. We need that. Why not? Right. Uh, okay. Reports from elected officials. Deputy Mayor Engel. I have no report that wasn't already mentioned or on the agenda. So thank you. You're very welcome. Thank you. Uh, Committee Member DeLuca. Thank you, Mayor. I'll make up for uh, Ms. Engel's uh, lack of a report. <laughs> I'm sure you will. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I, I just wanted to brief us a little bit on our sustainable Maplewood work. We had a meeting uh, in between our last meeting and this meeting. So just a couple of things. Um, our community energy plan, which we received a $10,000 grant from the uh, Board of Public Utilities. We've hired Rutgers uh, Green Building to do work with us. It's quite fascinating, the report that they're going to provide um, about energy use of all of our residents and commercial properties. It's, it's really amazing. So we're working on that planning process now. There will be a, a public session so that we can gather input and we'll have a report um, somewhere in mid-year about how we can talk about um, making some policy changes that would promote a more sustainable uh, energy use in our community. Our EV chargers, we're moving forward with those. Uh, they're really in two phases. One, uh, we're going to be installing chargers at the town hall uh, parking lot in the rear. Um, and then we're also selecting, we've selected five sites around town where we'll be installing a level two charger. Uh, we did go out to bid. The bids did not come in favorably. We've uh, redesigned the work. And so we are going back out to bid now. Uh, and we've uh, just did, I believe, a uh, walkthrough with some of the contractors. So we'll be getting that shortly. And then um, the federal funding, uh, the infrastructure money, we've been taking a look at that and see what's possible. I think uh, immediately we have... Um, some opportunities on converting our DPW fleet, some of the big big equipment there to electric vehicles. So we'll be looking at that and seeing uh, if and when we can get the applications in. Uh, that money's just still a little bit in process with the application system, but we'll be we're on that right now. Uh, on affordable housing, um, just want to uh, let me see. I can bring something up here. I want to just, uh, we are having a um, Essex County Home Improvement Program workshop in town. It'll be on two days, uh, Tuesday, March 14th, and Saturday, March 18th. Tuesday will be in the evening, Saturday uh, in the morning. It'll be at our senior center. We'll be getting this information out. It's about a, a, you know, a little more than a month away. We'll start putting it out. We'll send it out. Um, again, this is uh, the home improvement program is an opportunity for folks to get money from the county to do repairs to their homes. Uh, there is some income qualifications, but uh, we will work with uh, anybody in town to get them to work with the county and get these uh, get these dollars into our community so folks can pick up the fix up their home. The whole idea here is to help folks stay in their house because you know if they're staying if they can stay in their house and make sure that they're meeting all their needs and the building's up to code and the repairs are done uh, we want to sustain that we want them to stay there so that's that's the whole basis of that program um i just want to mention uh i'm sure ms Kripe will be talking about black history month but you know we had a great kickoff on sunday at 1978 um there's activity all this week. Friday night, we have uh, a film at the Woodland and uh, activity at the library on Saturday. So there's a lot of stuff happening. Please check out the website. And lastly, uh, at our last meeting, I mentioned that I've been in touch with the Ukrainian church folks about the one-year anniversary of the invasion of Ukraine. Um, we're going to be doing something on the 25th. It's a Saturday. It will be in the probably the early evening. Uh, we had some thought about doing like a, maybe a march and going to the church, but spoke to the mayor today. And I think we're gonna try to do something at town hall 
And then for that day, the 25th and the 26th, we will light up, uh, we will light up the uh, uh, town hall in Ukrainian colors. So it'll be the, as you see behind me, as we have now, the Black History Month colors. For those two days, we will light up as the Ukrainian uh, color, flag color. So uh, that'll be part of the ceremony, not the ceremony, but the remembrance uh, activity there. So more on that in the next couple of weeks. And that's it. That wasn't so bad. No, it wasn't. It was great. All of it is great. Thank you for a great report. Does the Home Improvement Program, if you know, apply to both interior and exterior repairs or improvements? Uh, interior to the degree that they're life safety, like a furnace, a hot water heater. It's not right. painting inside or anything like that. Right, 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 right. The, the basics and life saving and all that. Yeah. All right. Terrific. Terrific. That's a great program. Thank you for raising awareness about it. Committee member Cripe. Thank you, Mayor. Um, just a couple of things. Wanted to make mention that uh, the camp registrations have begun. They began on January 23rd. So if you have uh, plans this summer to have your children participate in some of the camps that we have offered, art, funky fun camp, we've got even for adults, goat yoga's come back strong, um, as well as basketball for adults. So please get yourselves over to Rec Desk and sign up. Um, we have open gyms are coming back through UseNet with the police department. We had a very uh, wonderful meeting with uh, the community as a group, as well as some of the leaders from the police department. And they were very excited to bring it back and having our, our chat and at sip and chats as well. So there'll be opportunities for our youth to interact in a more relaxed setting with our law enforcement officials and be able to build relationships, partnerships with South Orange as well. We're looking at partnering with the PDs of South Orange and Maplewood, as well as having the Mapso Legends who have shared an interest in um, participating in that. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, we have Fall and Winter Clubs for our YouthNet crew. They have had 75 clubs and the kids are coming. And so we wanna thank the members of the YouthNet committee as well as the community of Maplewood and South Orange middle school families for being a part of this program. We know how hard it is sometimes to get middle schoolers to do things, um, but they're really enjoying their time with their uh, leaders and with each other and are really coming together as a local community. So we're hoping to expand that even further. Um, finally, we have Black History Month as, uh, as Mr. DeLuca had mentioned, um, Ms. Barnett, would you be able to put that link up on the website? If you have an opportunity to visit the Maplewood Arts and Culture website, there is a link with under, under the calendar section that lists everything available and happening in and around Maplewood for this entire month, including films, including concerts, including conversations with our um, with thinkers and writers in the Black community about um, issues that are important, not only for understanding our history, but in moving us forward as a people um, in, a, in a diverse society. Um, so take a time, check out some different things. We've got children's events as well as those for adults. So please take some time this month to check out the listing and find one or two things that you're interested in and come on out. We, we look forward to having you be a part of the program. And uh, Anyone who has any suggestions for future activities, please let me know because it would always be helpful to have additional hands making our program more fulsome. So thank you, Mayor. That's our report. Thank you for that report, Committee Member Cripe. Great stuff going on with our youth in our community. I'm really excited and thank you for being such an active member of that and leading the way. Um, Committee Member Adams. Yes, thank you. Um, the only thing I have is just a reminder for Women's History Month. Our um, Women's History Month proclamation is at our first in-person meeting on March 7th. Um, also for, um, so we ask all um, current and former elected women in Maplewood and South Orange to come uh, help us read the proclamation. Um, Appreciate some advance notice so I can assign the whereas closes clauses to everybody. Um, we also the um, somawomen.org is the um, women's history um, month celebration events um, where you find everything. Um, I'm sure coming up soon on our website once Black History Month is coming to a close, we'll have uh, information on. Um, 
the uh, Women's History website and a link to this. Um, so we have stuff at the library. This is very new. Uh, we're doing a Girl Scouts Day of Service and uh, they'll also be coming to our uh, March 7th meeting. So uh, we ask everyone to join us. Um, we'll be doing the women wear white for women photo um, that we typically do that you uh, can see on the main page from uh, SOPAC last year. Um, we're going to be doing that at the um, March 7th Township Committee meeting. Um, so we encourage everybody to wear white um, for women and in that in that picture. Um, other than that, that's all I have. That's great. You all are organized. You got March planned out already? Hey, hey, I, yeah, I know. I, Every January, I think, why did I start this Women's History Month? Thing? <laughs> <laughs> oh my no, important we got to be recognized right so absolutely and i love that some of those you gave us a little snapshot there that they're also intersectional right and that's what we need to be doing more of so i better get my act together for june <laughs> oh you got time all right okay so um i have the final report i do have a few items um mayor's wellness campaign as we talked about Throughout the evening, we're officially launching it uh, on my 53rd birthday, uh, March 7th, the first meeting in March. Did everybody get that date, March 7th? Yes, yes, <laughs> somebody, yes. I'm shameless. Your gifts yes. lined up. The yes, flowers shameless. Hey, listen, another birthday is something to be proud of, right? Mine's June 1st, just so everybody knows. <laughs> <laughs> Are you registered somewhere so we can get make sure we yeah. have no, oh, no, no. my goodness. Mine's first day of Pride. Yours is the first meeting for Women's History Month. So there we go. We'll switch. Um, anyway. Did you say 53? That... I'm sorry. How many times did you say 53? 53. 53. 53. <laughs> all right. You're all jokesters tonight. I love it. Okay. So uh, we will be launching the campaign and announcing uh, all the different components that will be phased out throughout the rest of the year. Um, you know, we're going to use the campaign as an opportunity to highlight existing health and wellness initiatives in Maplewood and South Orange. And I got to tell you, we're really ahead of the game when it comes to health and wellness uh, across the state. When we talk to other stakeholders around the state, when I've talked to other mayors who've done wellness campaigns. So uh, we want to highlight some of those initiatives that don't get a lot of awareness. Um, and we want to do some new things, including the uh, the employee uh, walkathon or uh, walking opportunity. Uh, we're going to find a way to do one with the community as well, so people out there can also participate. Um, we're going to do a fitness crawl to highlight some of our local fitness uh, businesses throughout town and give people an opportunity to experience a new way to get in their physical fitness. Um, and we're also gonna highlight on art as health and wellness. You know, if fitness and walking and working out isn't your thing, art could be therapy. Art is cathartic and relaxing and a health and wellness. Um, and of course, there's gonna be a mental health component as well. Uh, we've been building fantastic relationships through the health department with some of our local uh, providers, social services providers, and mental health providers in particular, and we want to bring them in and work with them uh, to do some awesome conversations and assemblies uh, to cover to cover some mental health issues uh, that we're all facing as a community right now. So I'm really excited about that. It's not it's not all going to happen in March. Of course, it's going to happen throughout the year, but we will announce it in March. Please come out and join us tomorrow night at 7.30 on Zoom uh, for our next public safety committee meeting. Uh, we will provide an update on where we are with uh, the crime trends that we've been experiencing lately. Uh, uh, we, we're, we're having some, it seems at least now it's still early to tell, but some of the new, you know, the things that we've been doing uh, to be more strategic about uh, crime safety and crime prevention are working. Uh, so come on out and hear updates about that. We'll update the community about our efforts to make things better at, at and around Wawa um, and uh, talk about how we continue doing better in communicating uh, with the community on these issues. 
Uh, the Mayor's Council Rawway River Watershed Fro Flood Control Group. Uh, you probably haven't heard me report on this group, uh, and that's because there hasn't been anything to report on. This group was created in 2012 as an opportunity to put together a rawway study and to get uh, a project underway uh, in terms of Rawway River flood control and mitigation. We know that that's an issue across the state, certainly in our community. Uh, and we, you know, we hear from residents, we heard from residents recently personally affected after aid Ida uh, with respect to being on uh, one of the walls, their houses being very close to one of the walls and how the walls have become compromised. So, so the Army Corps of Engineers uh, has always been tasked with moving this project forward. There's been a lot of political resistance and other resistance through the years. Uh, despite spending over $10 million in studies. But recently, um, congressional direction and action is uh, making the Army Corps of Engineers move forward with a new study, and we're all very optimistic about that. So hopefully in the coming months, I will have something uh, substantive to report, and we're all feeling um, a little bit better about that. Uh, as we mentioned earlier, our budget workshops, we, we uh, covered our operating expenses, our operating expense proposals from each department in two budget workshops last week, and we have capital to go through an open space trust fund uh, forthcoming uh, in the next couple of weeks. We also hosted a second town hall uh, about the reval happening this year and to be effective in 2024. Uh, we had some really good participation there, over 130 people at some point during that two-hour meeting, and we informed folks about what it is, how it works, what they can expect, uh, and we also dispelled some of the myths. Uh, and we will continue doing public outreach about the reval uh, and also do better in communicating with residents about it, as committee member DeLuca alluded to earlier. Uh, as our health officer talked about and presented our, our crisis intervention social worker presented her annual report. In fact, technically she hasn't even been with us a whole year, uh, April to January. And in that short period of time, she's handled over 150 cases. Um, and, uh, you know, she, that report is available online. We were, we recorded that portion of the community board on police meeting, uh, last week where she presented that information. So please go out and listen to it. You're going to really learn a lot about vulnerabilities in our community that are real, um, and, um, you know, also support our efforts to expand our crisis intervention in Maplewood. I presented, uh, I basically rep well represented Maplewood at the Conference of Mayors, the Winter Summit last week, where I just basically talked about some of the great things we're doing in terms of economic development and uh, the health and wellness of our businesses. Uh, and I was really um, very proud to present our strength and our vitality uh, and to talk about some of the issues that all mayors are facing across the state and again, when you talk to some other mayors, even nearby, about the health and wellness of their businesses, we really have a good thing going on here in Maple, and we really should be proud uh, of all the work that we do to ensure that our businesses uh, are doing really well. The master plan, I'm going to move something here. I'm going to ask for support, officially make a motion. Uh, our steering committee met last week for the first time in the new year. Uh, to find out where we are with the master plan. This is where we are. We have compiled all of the information that we've gathered from existing public engagement sessions, and we're very close to presenting to the public through a, a new round of public engagement sessions, the recommendations for a new master plan. Um, the steering committee had some conversations and I had some conversations with stakeholders out there, and there seems to be a consensus that additional uh, engagement is necessary throughout the year uh, before we actually take this thing to the planning board for adoption. Uh, accordingly, the um, master, the planning firm is, uh, has, has made a request for some additional funds to expand their scope of engagement to include additional stakeholder engagement. 
Um, their, their proposal is for, uh, the request is for $14,000. I thought it was gonna be a lot more in light of all of the engagement they're gonna do. I think that's a reasonable amount. And I move, I make a motion to authorize um, our paying that amount to build in that additional engagement with the community. Can I get a second? I second that. Can I ask how many engagements that that is? It's going to be more than what we have right now. What we have right now is basically one additional public engagement to go through the recommendations in the original scope of services and the original contract with the planning firm. And we just, none of us think that that's enough to go uh, to talk with them, to engage with the public about the recommendations that they're gonna make for our new plan. So, um, so this is gonna buy us at least uh, four or five more. And some of them will be stakeholder specific and at least two of them will be big public uh, town halls in person and some of it through surveys as they've done already. Okay. Ms. Fritzen, we have a motion and we have a second. Can we get a roll call, please? Ms. Adams? Yes. Ms. Gripe? Yes. Mr. DeLuca? Yes. Ms. Engel? Yes. Mayor Daffis? Yes. And thank you all for your support. Uh, Interim Administrator Schuster, I'm sure you're taking notes about that so that we could uh, get that to our finance team. And then uh, the last thing that I have is what we've said already throughout the meeting, uh, a reminder that after our next meeting this month on the 21st, we return in person. Uh, what does this mean? This means that uh, we hope to see you in person. Come engage with us. But we understand the reality of people's schedules and all of the things that they are uh, juggling or working parents, uh, some of you may not be able to engage in person. So how will you be able to engage with us going forward, at least for the near future until we build greater capacity and opportunity? Um, you will be able to engage with us in the manner that uh, you were before. You can follow us live stream on YouTube uh, and you can through there um, uh, submit a question to us by email, we're able to read that question live and answer that question live, uh, in addition to people who will be in person to ask questions uh, or make remarks during public comment. So that's what we're gonna have for now. It's a start, it's not ideal, it's not perfect, it's not everything, uh, but you know, our assembly room is a very old room. It's a historic building. It has very high ceilings and it's not your traditional modern auditorium or conference center. Uh, it is, um, you know, much more complicated than we anticipated to wire the room uh, for Zoom access uh, like we're doing right now. True hybrid access is what I'm trying to say. Uh, but we could get there eventually. But this is how we're going to start. Uh, starting on March 7th, and that is my report. I want to um, ask Assistant Administrator Barnett, did I misrepresent anything about uh, engagement for those who can't be here in person? Barnett, did I get that technically correct? Yes, yes, that was correct, Mayor. Okay, good, 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 good. All right, discussion items, salary study, Mr. Schuster. Yes, uh, thank you, Mayor. This item came out of our discussions at the uh, budget hearings. Um, the, the, the issue at hand is whether or not to proceed with a salary study, um, because if we wait until the budget is adopted, uh, some time will elapse. And of course, if there is a salary study, the results would likely be implemented retroactively, and that could be well into the summer if we don't start something uh, as soon as possible. Just to let everyone know where we stand with it right now, 
um, and uh, Ms. Barnett has done a, a lot of research on this, uh, but we have just been looking at uh, you know, and talking to firms for budgetary purposes. We have not engaged anyone or received any proposals as of yet. Before we take that step, we wanted to have this discussion and see where the township committee uh, felt about the uh, you know, moving forward on this. Uh, for a salary study, uh, we'd be looking for a third party to come in uh, and do basically an audit of where we are uh, for our non-union employees uh, against uh, what the market value and what we're seeing out in the market. Additionally, there would be an option to potentially look at a pay equity study as well. Those are two key things that we would certainly like to look at. Um, uh, the more you do, obviously, the more the cost could uh, increase. And we have uh, cost estimates, depending on what items you want to put in there from 10, I believe, all the way up to, to $80,000. So um, again, that's just the range we're working with right now. Uh, but we feel that this is something that we can you know, get done, uh, hopefully in the $20,000 or less range, depending on the options that we choose. Uh, we'd still have to go out and, like as I said, get some proposals. Um, we're proposing looking out for a third party uh, for a number of reasons. One, we believe it'd be better if an outside entity came in study. Uh, second, uh, we feel that, uh, what well, I can tell you right now, that we really don't have uh, either the time or the expertise in-house to really effectively do this in a short period of time. So that's one of the, you know, a couple of reasons why we're looking at uh, having a third party come in. Uh, so that's all for uh, setting up this discussion and happy to uh, answer any questions. I open the floor for questions and discussion. Mr. DeLuca. Uh, thank you. So Mr. Schuster, I support doing the study. And I think in the budget, there were two lines. One was a professional line and one was a salary line. Is that correct? Uh, so correct. There was the, there in the professional services line item, I believe, is where we have the funding proposed for the study. The implementation of that study uh, was a large amount of money that was put in a separate line item. Correct. Right. So um, I think it's I think it's worth doing because I don't think everyone's leaving because of money, but you know it is a factor, and we we need to keep good people here, and we need to stay competitive with surrounding municipalities. Um, so I would like to see the study. I so I support that allocation. I think the salary uh, number is way too high. Um, I don't think we got here in one budget year, and I don't think we're going to get out of it in one budget year. So I think, um, you know, I would like to. I just think that that's, and I remember it was about four hundred thousand dollars. I think that's probably. It could be halved or even made into a hundred thousand, and then you know we we build that over the years because I mean it's just a huge number. Uh, I also think that by the time we get this done, I'm not sure it needs to be retroactive. It could happen in Ju June first, so I, I think uh, I'm for it. Uh, certainly keeping the money in there for the study. I have a difference of opinion on the number that should go in the salary line. So, but that you know we can discuss that more. Thank you. Other comments, Ms. Adams? Yeah, I just, I, I agree, obviously, with Mr. DeLuca, as I said as much at the budget hearing, but I do, um, I have concern about it, the study itself costing, getting, getting close to 100,000, the number you had put in the, in the budget at first was 50,000. Um, so I, in theory, I support the study, but it, I, I'm not willing to like vote yes on, on a huge number to do the study because it actually harms our ability to do what the study is supposed to do, which is to, um, use that money to get, you know, pay equity in there. And, um, so, and I agree with Mr. DeLuca. I don't, I don't think we're, and, and honestly, we, we haven't like, I mean, when I first started here on the township committee, we we basically replaced interviewed a lot of uh, department head changes over that time. But it, um, and uh, many of those are still here. So I'm not convinced that it's a, a salary reason for and I I don't feel like we're losing as many people for that reason as maybe being blamed on. Um, so. Yeah, 
that's my thoughts on it. Thank you. Committee Member Crape, any thoughts? I'm all for paying people what they're worth. And if this study shows that we've been a little in arrears for folks in different departments, maybe even with the longevity or even the additional training they may have received over the time that they were originally employed, it, it really is on us to get people where they need to be um, salary-wise. I'm for it. Um, you do have to spend money to, to do these things. So it is what it is. But hopefully that would be another way of encouraging our members, our, our, our staff to um, stay to commit, even if we haven't had a lot of folks leaving. Um, it's another reason for them to stay. And I think that is important. Thank you, Ms. Cripe. Deputy Mayor Engel, any thoughts? Um, I um, agree with having the study, and I also agree with Mr. DeLuca about that $400,000 being too high, especially um, if we want to talk about keep not raising taxes very high. So um, I would want to reconsider what that number is for retroactive pay or when did we start paying or whatnot. Just explore that a little bit more. Okay. Yeah, and, and I'm in the same boat. I agree we need the salary study. We've been talking about doing this now for over a year. I think it's right for a lot of reasons. It will improve morale. Uh, it will make us competitive. Uh, but maybe we phase whatever the results or recommendations are in over two budget cycles, right? Uh, not all in this budget cycle. Um, so so uh, maybe we don't need four hundred thousand dollars as a as the amount of money. Maybe it's half of that. Uh, so we'll talk about that further in the budget workshops for sure. Um, but I think um, we have a consensus to move forward with the salary study. All right. Thank you, Mayor. I will move forward with soliciting proposals and bring forth the recommendation and your feedback on the amount being uh, proposed in the budget uh, has been clearly received. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you for all your hard work on this. And uh, Assistant Administrator Barnett, please don't take this as a defeat. It's not. We're just trying to make a way to make this work for everybody. And we owe it to our employees to do the right thing by them. So I want to make that clear on on the record. Um, all right, the next discussion item is July 4th. Um, so we are um, in a better place. A lot of our community events have returned, including our larger community gathering events. We had Maple Woodstock uh, last year and some other big events. And residents have since reached out about July 4th. Uh, what are we doing about July 4th? Now, we have previously communicated why there wasn't July 4th last year, and uh, we also communicated about how there was a committee and not all of those members are still available or interested. Um, we're not going to get into that tonight. Uh, I just want to see where everyone is with respect to celebrating July 4th in Maplewood this year in a greater capacity than we did last year. We did some things last year. We, we had the bike race through the village and that was cute. Um, and that's a really fun event and the families enjoyed that. But are we gonna do um, something bigger? Uh, is there support for that, including the fireworks at night, which has been our signature July 4th celebration? Uh, I will add, just to murky the waters here a little bit, that I had some, some preliminary conversations with President Column in South Orange about possibly engaging in a similar celebration as we do with Juneteenth, meaning alternating uh, between the two towns, right? So we would host July 4th this year, do the Big Bang, everybody would come, yay. And then next year they would, and of course, both of us would chip in, both towns would chip in. Um, those discussions are very preliminary. I, I have no sense uh, of where they are uh, about that. They have not had a July 4th celebration for years. So maybe the answer to that is no. Everyone is working with limited budgets right now. Um, but I want to know where all of you are with respect to our July 4th celebration for this summer. 
I'm opening it up for discussion. I think we should do something, including the fireworks. Juneteenth this year, by the way, yeah. is going to be hosted by South Orange. It's their turn. We hosted last year and we had fireworks, as you'll recall. So um, I say we go all in this year. Maybe we don't need all of those food trucks and some of the we can we can downsize the event a little bit. Uh, and some of the afternoon activities that are uh, really not well attended because it gets really hot in the middle of the day anyway. We can plan it out, but before we get there, before committee member DeLuca and I start building a committee and start working on this and making plans, we wanna get a sense of where all of you are. So please, anyone? Um, be my vote would be yes. Um, just no circus, <laughs> no animal cruelty. Um, I, I think it's time for us to bring it back. We're coming back into um, a little bit more pre-COVID times. So I believe this will be something that the community will embrace and enjoy. And for so many people who've had to cancel so many plans over the last few years, having this to look forward to will really help galvanize and, and create connections in the community. I say yes. Um, and I'm happy to help in any way I possibly can. Deputy Mayor, thank you. Deputy Mayor Engel, you had your hand up first, but I didn't see you, I apologize. That's okay. Um, I agree about moving forward, but um, I would want to do it differently than it was done in the past. I do not like how the firework area was always fenced in. And I also don't thank like you. how expensive it was for families to come because you had to buy tickets to enter to do any of the activities. And a lot of the activities had charges on top of that. So you basically had to buy tickets to get in and then you had to pay more money to participate. And so I wanna make sure that whatever we do is um, free or available um, to all of our residents to participate and that it's not um, unequitable because of the price tag. Mayor? Yes. So I would like it to go back to the way it was before it got really big and fenced in the whole part of the whole park and all the things. Basically what it was was some races in the morning for the kids, bicycle race, you know, all very low key, low cost, baking contest, eating contest, and then the circus, but I have no problem if the circus doesn't doesn't come back. But we don't need the big stage and the whole park, um, you know, shut down and all that. We could just do the the very old fashioned like lighter things for that are is inclusive to everybody. And then the fireworks in the evening. I think way back when um, you paid ten dollars to get in close to the fireworks, but you could see them from all over. So it was sort of like that was just to kind of help defray the cost. But other than that, it was it was open, and there was uh, I think it was the community orchestra or something. It wasn't you know a big concert like big loud thing. It was just more low key. So that's what I would favor. I think. I think that's more of a of an old fashioned celebration that doesn't go crazy on cost and includes everybody. And I think, uh, you know, we might be able to manage that financially. I would like, since South Orange canceled theirs several years back, I'm sure we entertain a lot of South Orange residents. I would like if we don't alternate it every year or combine it with Juneteenth, that maybe we talk about at least a contribution to help defray the costs that it incurs from you know, that we put on for both communities. Mr. DeLuca. Yeah, so um, just to be clear, if, if there is no private group like before that is going to run this, it's going to be run by the town. So there's not going to be any fences. There's not going to be any pay. Uh, that was done. Essentially, the town did not pay anything other than uh, police. And, and that was some of that was covered by uh, the fees. So that's all done because there's no organization to do that anymore. So the last time that we thought about doing this before COVID, the town was going to just run fireworks and we were going to see if we could get volunteer groups to do the aspects of it during the day. I'll tell you that it's not easy. You know, we had groups who wanted to do things and they're just not capable of doing them anymore. They're not, they don't have a membership or they're just it's too difficult for their staff to come out on July 4th. So we were able to pull together the parade last year. It happened to be the largest 
Fourth of July parade we ever had. So I don't know. I guess people were pent up. Um, I think what really, really sparked this conversation is when we uh, were at the budget hearing and we saw the budget line of $45,000 for this. I think that's way over what we need. Here's um, the resolution for last year for the June, Juneteenth fireworks. And you can see the winning bid was seventeen five. So I think we could probably reduce that number that we have in the budget from 45 down to 25 um, and really, you know, focus on um, the fireworks, uh, some costs with the parade, maybe some other costs for some of the groups who are going to run things. Um, but it's not going to be a full blown park closing. There's not going to be any fences. I mean, the only fences that might be would be snow fences around the fireworks site so that we have the safety. But there's not going to be any entrance fence. And so that's the, that's the way we planned it um, three years ago before it was canceled. And that, I think, is the way it would come forth, you know, go forth this year. Terrific. Thank you. Uh, committee. Yes. Deputy Mayor. Uh, can I have one more thing? Um, when Miss Adams was talking, I remembered there also used to be a community art project um, at Fourth of July. And I feel like that might be a good thing to bring back. Um, because he, clearly for Yale Corner, people came out in the blazing heat to do community art. So it might be a good community building that's a lower cost. Yep, yep. There's ways to do this right. And uh, I agree with everything that's been said. Uh, I have no interest in uh, returning to the fence, the, the, en you know, the entry fee and the craziness that the July 4th event became. Um, so great. We have the green light then. Uh, committee member DeLuca and I will uh, start building a committee. There are people who uh, have raised their hands to help. And maybe this discussion tonight will inspire others to do the same. And we will um, start planning on a few things and keep you updated as those things develop. All right, moving on. Dakana Cannabis Retail License Approval. Uh, I believe we have the principal of Dakana with us, Ms. Cynthia Sanders. Uh, could we bring Ms. Sanders over just in case um, we may have questions for her and or public comment or remarks? But essentially, uh, Dakana has returned to us uh, with documentary proof of meeting all of our local uh, conditions for approval, meaning they presented us with uh, their diversity and equity plan. They presented us with their affidavit to not employ armed personnel or contract with armed personnel at their facility. In their particular case, they presented us with a lease on the parking spaces um, that were Part of this negotiation and this condition, conditional approval at the outset when they presented their plan to us, uh, they also have agreed to our community host agreement. Um, and so I would move that uh, by resolution that we could do retroactively after the meeting tonight, I move that they be approved for uh, local operation. And this will be our last cannabis retail license as per our current ordinance. Second. Sadams? Yes. Scribe? Yes. Mr. DeLuca? Yes. Zangle? Yes. Mayor Daffis? Yes. Thank I'm you. Here. I'll do a, I'll do a uh, resolution of memorialization. All right. Uh, Mayor, can and, I just, uh, uh, I just want to thank them because one of the issues was the issue of parking. Yep. And we asked them to go back and they came back and, and really solved that, which was a was a problem. And, and I just want to thank them for that. And just for the record, this is our fourth cannabis uh, retail license. Um, one of them obviously was the one that transitioned from medical to uh, adult use. That was from a national company. But the other three, two are, are to women-owned firms, and one is to a minority-owned firm. So um, I think that we are doing the kinds of things that we said we wanted to do when we started out. And of the of the of the four, essentially three of them were businesses before they became adult use. One was the medical to adult use. 
and two were CVDB that um, transition. So uh, I think you know when you're when you're talking at some of these mayor events, this might be another thing to talk about how you do this properly. Mm -hmm. Yes, indeed. And that was something that we covered is the cannabis and how it can be done uh, properly. And I also want to thank, I'm proud of us, but I also want to thank Ms. Sanders and her team for everything that they did to, to meet our community needs. Ms. Sanders, I see you're here with us. Would you like to make a couple of remarks? You don't need to, it's not necessary, but since you're here, we offer you that courtesy. We see you, you're unmuted, but we don't hear you. Okay, Ms. Sanders, uh, we're gonna move on. Thank you for being with us and congratulations. We will follow uh, up with you in the coming days with the resolution and get those uh, documents executed officially. Thank you again. All right, moving on to Fields Committee. Deputy Mayor Engel, this is yours. Thank you, Mayor. Um, so you may have all heard that we have a very engaged community around our fields. And um, I know I'm new here, but I get questions about it all the time, what's happening. And I know um, Ms. Kripe and I chatted, because I know at Rec Advisory, the issue came up as well about creating um, some kind of subcommittee. And so Ms. Kripe and I talked about how um, it probably should not be just a rec advisory subcommittee, but we should be bringing in the environmental advisory committee. Um, we should be bringing in people who are using the field. It could kind of be a, a, a committee that's comprised of all different stakeholders on all different sides of the issues. So we can come up with some kind of plan um, to move forward, um, to make our fields usable for everybody to um, enjoy. So I have no idea the process of how we start doing that or even much of what happened to the old fields committees that were, um, I think, formed. So I thought I would just bring it here to discussion with all of you. There used to be a, um, and it was because the uh, a lot of the teams play in a, a two-town kind of, manner there used to be a, a committee that I don't think has met for a few probably four years or so with South Orange uh, it was both rec directors and you know members of of the committees like the ones you just mentioned um, but maybe that should be um, reinstated or brought back for this purpose You mean as you're saying doing like a shared committee with South Orange to look at yeah, fields? Because I think, and it'd be nice to have somebody from the school district. I think you know the schools use our parks for their sports teams. It's only fair that we um, be more proactive using the school district's fields. They're putting into new artificial turf fields, and um, that would be nice to be able to like deal with some of the people who want their kids to play on artificial turf. And we don't have that as township property, but it, it really is because of Cougar soccer and those clubs and a lot of that, it's really a two town kind of, just like the school districts are, are combined. It's, it's something that makes sense to try to figure out on a both town wide basis and the school district. Well, I think we can have those conversations with the school district through our monthly uh, sessions with the school district and sort of get their buy-in. But I think for purposes of our residents who are concerned about fields uh, and other stakeholders having a committee to address their concerns and continue that dialogue since the task force is no longer, uh, I think a separate fields committee makes sense. Um, uh, I'm sorry, Deputy Mayor Engel, I missed the beginning of your presentation due to a developing uh, incident, police activity over at the high school, which I'm learning has now, uh, it was a scuffle among students and now the students have dispersed and things seem to have calmed down. I don't know all the details, but I missed your opening uh, proposal. 
I understand we talked about this in engineering and planning, public works, and we talked about it, uh, no, rather we talked about it in human services. And there was a proposal there that um, we moved forward. Is that the proposal that you mentioned here tonight? Yes, that we move forward with a field committee that is has representatives from REC, from environmental advisory, from sports teams, um, from all different stakeholders who are interested in figuring out how to make our fields enjoyable for all uses and to come up with a, a real plan, a multi-year plan on what we're going to do to, um, you know, make our fields better. And I agree with um, Ms. Adams about how, you know, it probably it probably is a two town at a school district um, thing. However, I don't feel, feel like that is very realistic to happen um, quickly. And I've only been in this position for what, a month, six weeks, six weeks. And um, I get so many questions about this every day. And I feel like there was um, a lot of talk about creating a committee and something getting done. And it's been a year and there hasn't been anything that's happened. So I just want to start pushing the needle and having conversations. And I think the first step is bringing all the different stakeholders on all the different um, sides to the table to just start talking with each other and forming community and figuring out the best way to solve this problem. Because we all want the same thing in the end. Everyone just wanted to get there in a different way. So I think it's just time that we all sit and meet and civilly and just discuss how to move forward. Okay. Mr. DeLuca, do you have any thoughts? I think Ms. Kreipetter. Uh, yeah, I, the only thing I want to say is uh, I, I'm not sure how this committee uh, relates to the Recreation Committee. So I think you'd have to figure that out. Is it a subcommittee of the Recreation Committee? Is it a standalone committee? Um, so, and then uh, I just want to take a little exception to nothing's been happening. I mean, we have been making improvements to the fields. So we, we did hear loud and clear that people were unhappy with the fields. We've been spending tens of thousands of dollars in DHART uh, trying to solve the uh, more recently with the the uh, the silting and the, you know, the uh, some of the drainage issues there. So and we've put, you know, Sam over at uh, Borden Park. So I don't want to give the impression to the public that we haven't been doing anything. We have been we've been focusing mostly on the engineering and public works side. I think what you're talking about is a different conversation about sort of a vision of what the fields could be, uh, how we get there. Uh, everybody's got their input and you move forward. Meanwhile, yeah, been, we're going to keep, keep doing the work that we're doing and trying to make sure the fields are playable this season. Right. And I, I think that is a bit of what Deb and I and other people who've been talking to us are saying. Um, and some of this could also just be simply communications. We had gotten the notice from um, from uh, uh, DPW Supervisor Riccardi in regards to the silt application and the steps that are gonna be coming up next for the fields at the heart. Um, that was all kind of internal. <laughs> no one other than us heard about it. And I think if that information had been conveyed publicly to the community, they probably wouldn't feel like nothing was done. But they, we know you're, you guys are walking, you're, you're busting your humps and we appreciate it. So part of this fields committee could also be dealing with that aspect, the fact that maybe communications could be stronger to the community so they know what's coming down the pike and they just think we're not doing anything. But I also believe it needs to be standing known, not under rec. Okay, so committee member Angle, I mean, Deputy Mayor Angle, excuse me, I think you you have what you need to move this forward, but it sounds like you'll have to come back to us and give us more details about how this is going to work out. Okay. Um, Great. Okay. Yeah, I think we, I just, Mayor, I just think we, we're going to need to at some point pass a resolution that sets up this committee. I think that's what happened last time. The, the, the task force was not set up through the township committee. It was set up by one person on the township committee. Right. And it never got buy-in from the, we never know what was going on. So I think if we're going to do this, then we should have a proposal. It should come to us. How are people going to be? Is it going to be anybody just sign up? Uh, are we going to do appointing? So that I would appreciate to get that in a proposal so that we can vote on it. I'm sure we're all going to vote for it, but just to get it so it's clear. I would advise it not be there were like 50 people on the the one that task force one. And it, it, you, just, you just can't figure stuff out with that many people at the table. So it's more of a, you know, representation from those groups you mentioned to keep it manageable and 
actually productive. Yeah, 50 people is in a task force. It's a party. Uh, so uh, Deputy Mayor Engel, you have your marching orders and your first opportunity to effectuate new legislation. So get cracking on that. All right. Mayor, 53 people is a birthday party. <laughs> And we can get that task force back together to celebrate. But it. only if there's cake. Only if there's cake. Uh, you are funny. Love the dovetail there to earlier discussions and remarks. Okay, we're going to move. Uh, our consent agenda is next. But I did hear from Dokana Principal Sanders, who is available and wishes to um, address the committee Um if we can bring her back over, Assistant Administrator Barnett, um, I want to offer them that opportunity if we can, since they're still with us. I'm here. Can everyone hear me? Yes, we can. And here I am. Y'all are we having so much fun too. tonight. Thank <laughs> we you for are. letting me come back. I had to switch computers. But I really wanted to um, thank the committee for approving us. We're so excited mm -hmm. to create um, the building. Uh, just to, We're going to totally change it. And um, we want to make it a, a unique experience for the town. And we want to have... Um, you know, the Irvington Avenue Alliance so that we can involve uh, that neighborhood. And so I wanted to tell you that. And as far as the uh, confirmation goes, um, assuming it's um, going to be conditional on the CRC final approval, because we are doing the conversional license right now as we speak. Okay, that's all I wanted to say. Well, thank you for that. We appreciate you too. And nice to see you. Thanks for making it work. Thank you. Yeah. Take care, guys. Good night. Uh, consent agenda. We're going to do it a little differently here because uh, some people have to abstain from certain things. Um, all right. Can I get a motion? On the, on the consent agenda for items 14J through... 14V, like Victor. Move it. Second. Ms. Adams? Yes. Ms. Kreit? Yes. Mrs. DeLuca? Yes. Ms. Engel? Yes. Mayor Daffis? Yes. All right. And... Can I get a motion for items 14A of the consent agenda? These are the minutes for each of the meetings uh, in the last quarter of last year, 14A through 14F, uh, like Frank. So moved. Second. <laughs> Just Robert's rules of order. She can't vote. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. Mayor, I, I think Ms. Engel could vote on the closed session minutes uh, that are on there. Right. Of January 17th. Okay, you want me to take those out. So I renew my motion then, my goodness. Um, items 14A through 14E is our second. 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 Ms. Adams? Yes. Ms. Kreit? Yes. Mr. DeLuca? Yes. Stengel? Stain. Mayor Daffis? Yes. And I move item 14F, closed session minutes of January 17th, 2023. Second. Sams? <laughs> yes. Ms. Kreit? Yes. Mr. DeLuca? Yes. Ms. Engel? Yes. Mayor Daffis? Yes. This Mayor, I hate. I hate to throw this at you, but I think you started the last, the first motion at 14J, and we've skipped a couple, like appointing Mr. Grobman as Council of Community Board and G, H, and I. I could be wrong, but I thought you started at J. I started at G. Oh, G. Okay. Yeah. 
And I know that I said G because I circled it on my paper. So that's what I said. Good. That must be, I heard the G part. <laughs> okay. This brings us to our second public comment period for any subject matter. Mr. Waltz. Good evening, Mayor and Township Committee. We will now begin the second public comment portion of our meeting on any subject matter. If any meeting attendee would like to address the committee, please use the raise your hand function. We'll convert you over to a panelist and allow you three minutes to speak. Mayor, first we have Matthew Gross. We'll convert you over to a panelist and allow you three minutes to speak. Uh, good evening. Can you hear me okay? Yes, we can, Mr. Gross. Welcome. Okay, great. Thank you so much. I appreciate the time. My name is Matthew Gross. Uh, of 144 Development. I'm the owner of 1805-1807 uh, Springfield Avenue. Just a quick history uh, on uh, my uh, investment in, in the property and in the township of Maplewood. Uh, 2018, I had started discussions with the town and the Springfield Business District to identify a property for a cannabis uh, dispensary. Uh, 2019, I purchased the property. In 2020, uh, successfully uh, received site plan approval, including a cannabis dispensary. Uh, in 2021, the township amended its cannabis ordinance in response to the state issuing its regulations. This created an issue of the distance between dispensaries of 1805-1807 Springfield and Apothecarium. In 2022, uh, working together, uh, about four or five months later, the township made a second amendment to rectify uh, the distance from 1,000 to 500 feet. Although due to that delay, I lost my tenant. Uh, but I have now, timing couldn't be worse, <clears throat> but I've now identified uh, a New Jersey certified minority owned business who has a conditional license from the state. Uh, and I'm hoping the township will consider uh, reviewing my tenant's application for an additional uh, local license. Uh, it's been five years. Uh, we've worked together through a whole bunch of hurdles. Uh, also, um, uh, just believe this is you know, a way to also address, uh, since it's an MBE, uh, the, the diversity, equity, inclusion. Uh, I've made that a point in my negotiations uh, with the tenant. Uh, and being that this is a location that has been contemplated for years for this use, uh, I thank you again for allowing me to speak. When you keep it brief, uh, I hope I can continue to invest in uh, the property and in the township. 30 seconds. And I, I believe the tenant uh, has joined to speak on their own behalf. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Gross. Mayor, next we have Alan Suarez. We'll convert you over to panelists and allow you three minutes to speak. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, yes we can, Mr. Suarez. Welcome. How are you? I'm having a little trouble with my camera. Here you go. Uh, hi, my name is Alan Suarez. I'm the potential tenant for 1805-1807 Springfield Avenue. Um, I'm a first-generation Latino New Jersey resident. I'm a minority entrepreneur and owner of Motherland Nug Company, a New Jersey MBE certified business. I have a pending priority application with the New Jersey State Cannabis Regulatory Commission for a conditional uh, license as a diversity owned business. Um, as I've started this journey opening a cannabis business, I've experienced significant hardship in finding a viable commercial location, which brings me to meeting uh, the property owner, Matt Gross, who just spoke, who has helped me uh, tremendously progress in, uh, in this difficult real estate market that currently presents challenges for minority uh, entrepreneurs like myself. <clears throat> to date, I've assembled a great team of minority colleagues to assist me to make my business a success and hopefully mentor other minority entrepreneurs who will come behind me. Lastly, per my many visits and research at, on Maplewood, New Jersey, I find the community to be diverse and welcoming, and I wish to open a successful minority-owned retail cannabis business in the future. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Suarez. Any Mayor, other? I see no one else. 
Okay, seeing no, no other public comment, we're gonna close the public comment period. I move that we adjourn and meet again on February 21st. Second. Ms. Adams? Yes. Scribe? Yes. Mr. DeLuca? Yes. Drangle? Yes. Mayor Daffis? Yes. Thank you and good night, everyone.